Most people, when they use the word or when they hear someone use the word manifestation, they think of a material object that is manifested. But by manifestation, we mean a point of perception. In other words, an emotion is a manifestation. When you feel fear, you have manifested that fear in response to your thought. Or when you feel elation, you've manifested that. So rather than calling manifestation a car in the garage, let's call manifestation a point in time where something is being experienced. Stay with us just a little bit. You'll like how this broadens out. We talk about this vibrational reality. Do you follow us when we talk about it? We gave it the name, the vortex, because we wanted it to feel like something that's real to you. Because you can't yet see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it, but still it is a vibrational manifestation that does have shape and form and can be sensed and can be experienced and then therefore can have emotional ramifications. So this subject really asks for the title, turning thoughts to things, because if you're turning vibrations to thoughts and thoughts to things, then most people want to call those things manifestations. We want to call it manifestation all the way along. When you're having an experience that you don't like, that's a manifestation. And when you launch a rocket of desire, that's a manifestation. And as that rocket of desire is coalescing with others, where the cooperative components are all gathering together, that's a manifestation. But most people are not aware of the vibrational manifestation because they're not interested in feeling their way into anything. They want to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. And if they can't see it and smell it and hear it and taste it and touch it, then they don't want to call it a manifestation. So we want to call creation manifestation. And so what we're really talking about is perception. How much awareness do I have of my manifestation as it's unfolding? So Esther at the airport was on her way to a meeting with a new friend that she certainly would call a manifestation because the woman hugged her 12 times. In other words, it was a manifestation. But it was also a manifestation when Esther got a very strong impulse to go. That was a manifestation. So strong she couldn't ignore it. Things are always in the process of becoming. Your awareness of it in its process of becoming is what we want to call your attention to because that's where the pleasure of creation is. If you are a painter painting on a canvas, you can take a lot of pleasure from your blank canvas. You can take a lot of pleasure from gathering your brushes and your colors or your medium. You can take a lot of pleasure from just getting the sketch set up right down to the details of the last little nuance that you put on the bird's wing. All of that is manifestation. Everything is in the state of becoming. So we want to call your attention to the pleasure that you can feel in the process of becoming. What trips most people up is that they don't want to start taking any pleasure from something until it's manifested. They really mean things such as, well, I will believe it once it has manifested. Once the money's in my bank account, I'll believe I'm rich. Or once the car's in my garage, I'll believe I can have that car. And we want you to take pleasure in all of the phases of manifestation, all of the comings together of it. If you're a sculptor sculpting the clay, we want you to love the feeling of the clay in your hands. And we want you to enjoy the feeling of your hands being inspired to work the clay into the image that you have in your mind. But there is this vibrational clay that is pliable and responsive to your thoughts. So if you were sculpting a vase or something wonderful from this clay, you wouldn't take the clay and sculpt it a little while and then just mess it up and throw it on the floor. But you do that with your thoughts all the time. You sculpt a little and then you throw it on the floor. Then you scrape it up and you sculpt it for a little while and then you poke its eyes out. <laughs> then you sculpt it a little while and then you rip its tail off. Thoughts are turning to things and you are the thinker of the thoughts. So if you are 
giving less attention to how things are taking shape and form and you're paying more attention to how you feel as it is coming along then you can enjoy the manifestation long before anybody else can see the car in your garage does that make some sense to mm -hmm. you yeah and so and so uh i feel like uh i'm the kid in the christmas story and i'm talking to santa claus and santa claus is asking me what i want yeah and then i say what i want and he's like but this santa claus this is what this santa claus is saying santa claus is saying so kiddo you've been thinking a whole lot of things and all of the ingredients have been gathered so everything that you've ever wished for can flow into your experience would you like to focus with me here and now santa is saying and tell me what you would like to see now i try to look through life through a child's eyes i try to find wonderment and but amusement. you see the child's eyes in the way that child that you are talking about has been taught is that that santa is all screwed up that santa is saying i'm keeping a list of whether you've been good or bad and i'm holding you hostage and even in this moment you don't know for sure if you've been good or bad and so now you're just hoping 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 that you can be beguiled enough that you can tell me what you want in other words there's so many holes in that process and that's the way most people treat the creating of their own reality like there's some outside arbitrator who is making the decision about whether you deserve it or not when that ship sailed you do deserve it and you are the only one that is withholding anything or letting anything in you're the one who defines how big you are willing to dream and how much of what you are willing to dream you are willing to let in you hold it all you are the santa that you have come to despise the santa that you don't trust the santa that let you down the santa that gave more to that kid than to you and he's bad you know he's bad how did that rotten little kid get that big old truck that's not fair you see and so all kinds of people come to all kinds of erroneous flawed premises about how things come to them because they put these beliefs in place that prevents them from trusting in the goodness of the universe that is always flowing to you well see for me then when I see that kid and I see what he wants and he has this desire and through all these obstacles that come up in front of him, he never stops believing that he wants this. And that, of course, it's a movie, so there's going to be a happy ending or a sad ending. As I'm watching it, never seen it before, I know it's going to have to be a happy movie because it's called The Christmas Story. So this kid's going through this turmoil trying to get this toy that he Why are you wants. trying to make an analogy that you don't like work for you in this way? Why are you trying to twist that thing that doesn't work for anyone into something when you have access to the laws of the universe? Well, I think it's because I'm trying to understand, does my desire have to be pinpoint or generalized? That's a really significant question. And we know if you've been listening to us for any length of time at all, you think we're a little schizophrenic because sometimes we tell you be clear be specific script what you want and other times we say be general back up get into a daydream state but the reason that we say different things to you at different times is because if you don't believe then stop thinking because you're not helping yourself if you do believe then think more because you are helping yourself if your desire and your belief are in the same place then the more you think about it the better you feel but if your desire and your belief are not in the same place then the more you think about it the worse you feel here's the best analogy so you go into your living room and there's the big old beautiful vacuum cleaner Santa just brought it <laughs> and you're going to vacuum the living room but you don't bother to plug it in you flip the switch it's a very quiet vacuum <laughs> and you run it over all of the carpet in this big room you leave tracks everywhere or you could plug it in and get a much better effect and so we're asking you to pay attention to what it feels like to be plugged into the power of the universe feels like joy feels like elation feels like satisfaction 
feels like satisfaction on steroids or to not be plugged in which feels like insecurity and doubt and competition and struggle and worry first order of business are you plugged in if you're plugged in think as much as you can think about it because every thought will be pleasurable if you're plugged in think as much as you can about it not because you need to think about it to make it happen that's already underway but because thinking about it is fun so the rule of thumb is get plugged in and then think about it and if you're not plugged in you can't do too much damage if you're not plugged in because now you don't have the power that creates worlds flowing through you but there is a pretty steady stream of pessimism and all the thoughts that humans have thought in other words you can get a pretty good tailspin going in that nightmare that you think as you're pessimistic about your life but we get it we see why little kids become grown-ups and don't believe in their own ability to create because they've been sold a bunch of flawed premises like there is a God who is judging you or a Santa Claus who is judging you or parents and teachers who are continually judging you where you come to believe that you've got to please them first and if you please them then everything will be all right but then they let you down over and over again because first of all it's not their job to hold you as their singular object of attention next of all they're not that interested in you they're not the source through which your well-being flows they're here to co-create with you and they're here to stimulate you to what you want and certainly there are wonderful experiences to be had but the reason that there are so many of you who are co-creating together is because together you come to more and more positive conclusions about what would be better in this co-creating experience you don't give each other power in fact humans detract power from each other constantly because as you stand in judgment of someone like I don't like the way you look or I don't like where you come from or I don't like your sexual orientation or your religious orientation or your political orientation or 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 I'm in this world with you and I don't like you for some reason well that has no power to you except the power that you assign to it by deciding that you will be inferior because of this the real damage is happening to the person who is choosing to look at you in a way that his inner being won't look at you so he's pinching himself off from his power and his resources and blaming you for it and you get enough people who are using you as their negative object of attention pretty soon you cannot feel that good about yourself but when you get it that none of them have any power they only have the power to influence you to your own disconnection and you only have the power to influence others to their disconnection or maybe to influence them to their connection before you came into this physical body you were source energy you were a consciousness aware of all that is and keenly aware of this time space reality and so part of that consciousness was directed here and here you were born into this body splat here you are now this non-physical consciousness that you were before you got here still exists and all that you've ever been all that you've been in the process of becoming still exists all the pure positive energy all that you have lived and all that you've come to be you still be but now as that non-physical consciousness you be more because here is this physical being in a new place having new experiences and asking for new things this combination of beings has never been before unto all of the universe and so together we are moving forward whether you can feel it or not it's happening just as a result of your questions and our answers and your responses to our answers and your responses to his questions in other words this is an expanding universe that is in the process of expanding right here and now and so you just not just you but you all just became more than you were before you came up here and we had this conversation we are all more than we have been before and your inner beings have all embraced the incremental expansion and are holding that steady place now you in your physical form have an option of staying up to speed with what we are becoming and in a room like this it's easier to do or you can go back to your neighborhood and back to your mother and back to the disconnected others back to your television back to the meanness back to the boldness back to the pressure back to the whatever and you can not allow your consciousness to move forward with what just happened here